All right. You know what that goofy music means, guys? It is Friday. That's SketchUp Live Day. You knew that was coming. All right. You know that you're tuned in to the best place for SketchUp on Friday afternoons. Ladies and gentlemen. Three of the five here. Bring it home, bring it up. You know that you got your host, Aaron Dietzen, coming up. We got the pot bellied stove coming up. It's Friday, it's SketchUp Live. Let's get it going! We just never know what's going to happen there. Matt's like, about 10 seconds go, hey, I got an intro I could throw out there. Oh. I really love the incredible energy in that opening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be good. Well, it is Friday and it's been a while. So um, I apologize. No, I don't apologize. It, it happened. We were gonna do a live stream last week. We were going to, at your recommendations, we were going to make a stove for the wood cabin the, the log cabin we made and uh, hot, belly. hot belly. Unfortunately, I got sick, lost my voice. Uh, so we didn't do that, but came back. Aww. So that's, I think Matt's got weeks of introductions built up and they just exploded all over our ears. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, introductions. I'm Aaron. Uh, I am going to be modeling today. We're going to be modeling a potbelly stove from a couple of photos. It's going to be pretty cool. We actually have, I, I travel with a big entourage nowadays because I'm a big deal. So uh, we have, I apologize, a lot of times we have little footers at the bottom. Um, well, maybe we have some, I don't know. We have some. I'm going to I'm gonna turn them on and see what they say, see what they're, if they're any good. Hey, that's me. Oh, sometimes it says I'm here just to learn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Over one. The wrong place. And then we have Tyson, who's going to teach you a thing or two. So I'm here to learn. Tyson got all the applause on that one. Uh, we got Jody in here with wit, wisdom, and whatever. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and learn something. Yeah. And then, ha! We got a title that's perfect. I can't read it. <laughs> It's not even going to clap for it. himself. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it says remote sound guy. Uh, <laughs> all right. So apologize for the shenanigans. We actually had some people who, I want to just comment on this. I'm not, not calling anybody out. Not upset by this by any means. Uh, we had some people who watched the live stream after it was recorded and say that, uh, you know, they just wanted us to cut to the lesson. Just teach me how to use SketchUp. And I get where that thought process comes from. Uh, we do try to do these uh, as teaching things where we show you how to do stuff in SketchUp. And that, that is an important part of what we do. But uh, just so you guys know, on our live streams, on these Friday afternoons, we do try to take it kind of easy and have a little bit of fun here as well. So um, if you don't want to goof around and sign sound effects, great on your nerves, that sort of thing, then uh, <laughs> we have plenty of recorded content, which skips all the fun stuff. So uh, you know, something for everybody. Anyhow, enough, enough precursoring or is that the right term? I don't know. Disclaiming? Disclaimer. I Disclaiming. I think is right. Okay. Exclaiming. I disclaimed it. All right. Cheers. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. All right. Into it. Into it. So Lawrence is wondering when he's supposed to laugh. Okay. Maybe Matt can cue that. Do you have a laugh, a laugh track now? Um, or, right now. Or an applause button? <laughs> laugh along with our... This is all the viewers when they're listening to my intro. That's certainly me listening to your intro. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I, I watched some show. I, I was waiting for a show I wanted to come on on broadcast television. Um, that's that's what you watch when you're watching Netflix or Apple TV, by the way, guys, this broadcasting antennas and stuff. Um, but I was watching a show that had a full on laugh track and it was it was not a studio recorded show either. So it was not a live studio because they were shooting on locations. And I realized something. I don't like laugh tracks because I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> do you wear a mask? Oh, 
I will laugh when I think it's funny. You can't tell me I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I actually read some interesting piece talking about how it's like under, underscores racism and all kinds of like major social problems, like the whole laugh track, the history of it. It's very, it's very interesting. I feel, uh, I feel oh, like wow. I've been lied to for so much of my life. But I can't watch Friends. Everybody's like, I love Friends. And I'm like, it's a laugh track. Kill it's me. hard. It's hard. But that at least was a live studio, right? Weren't they in yeah. sets? And yeah, this was actually like recorded laughter playing over people being shot on location somewhere. It was, ooh, I was mad. I ended up mad at that sitcom. I don't even remember what it was. It obviously made a very big impact on me. Okay, let's follow. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm going to import. <laughs> okay, so I found... Uh, three images which are front back and one side of the same stove this i started looking at potbelly stoves and the actual proper potbelly stove is that you know that egg shaped uh stove i really like that geometry um there's a lot of wood burners that are kind of based off of a box and and i saw some found some good ones but they're kind of dull you know because they were boxes so this immediately the shape of it uh was immediately going to be something i have to work on a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and start importing. I'm going to grab the front first and I'm going to blow it up to about that size-ish. All right. I'm going to start by taking a look at this thing. I'm looking for the belly of this thing and what looks pot-like. Is it? I think it's pot like a cooking thing, not like a boulder pot. <laughs> not like you've been eating too many donuts. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so, I mean, in all reality, this shape is really pretty simple, right? Because you have all of this kind of could be a follow me. Let's look at the side view because I don't know what's going on right here. You know how I'm always telling you guys how I, I try not to like um, spend too much time planning ahead? I have spent zero time planning for this. You're like the, you're like the an, anti-Tyson. I found I found these images two weeks ago when I thought I was going to do this before I got sick. I downloaded them and I have not looked or thought about it. Looked at them or thought about it since then. So, well, so like I'm looking at that picture there. I'm a little confused because it's got like a nuclear coat or a nuclear like symbol on that. Is this for burning plutonium? Hey, I'm not going to judge what you put in your stove. Okay. All right. Yes. Import one more. Let's get the back view. I mean, you only the only way to get a hold of any good sort of commercial grade plutonium is make a deal with the was it the Libyans? Who was it that uh, that Doc Brown made his yeah made his connection with? How'd they find me? <laughs> Who? The Libyans. Yeah. Was the one. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, it does look like this whole shape could be. Follow me. And look, I could draw a line right down the middle. I could, you know, trace these steps, come around here, have this little step out here, come back in, a little bump in there to break. Except that the keen eyed among you will notice that this is kind of ribbed all the way around. So, question is do I try to do something like that now? Or do I do a follow me and come back and see if I can do something there? Because what I first think of when I see this is doing something kind of like a gear. You know, we take a, a circle with a whole bunch of edges, make some pop outs, then start push pulling and resizing, push pull, resize, push pull scale over and over again um, to do that. But I'm not sure. You're right there. Is there a black thing behind me? What is that? Oh, it's it's Sumele's shadow. Sorry. <laughs> Sumele's creeping on me. I'm like, what is that thing behind me? There's I thought I thought we had a an artifact. Someone who's sneaking up on me behind me in real life, but it was just just Sumele stalking me. Okay, that I'm okay with. <laughs> so um with something this small, this small of a relief too, 
I would probably end up deferring back to like a material as opposed to trying to model that. It looks like it's pretty small. So I'm thinking I'll do a follow me. I think we'll the, this first part will be follow me and then we'll come in and maybe use some light, alternating light and dark fills or something like that. I don't know. But I don't, I don't think I'm going to try to model that right now. Because I feel like if I get into that, that'll be one of those shows where everybody watches Aaron, where they're all shaking their head at home. And then afterwards... <laughs> well, but it could give you a chance to do some stitching, which we know you love. I'm, I'm always optimistic that that'll happen regardless. It does. I guess it's a good good call there, though. It does look like it's a very even split. Yeah, like I think so. Right. All right. So I know Tyson's mentioned this too. When you get pictures like this, is the term parallax? So there is, there is, as I'm looking at these rounded surfaces right here. So if I look straight on at a round thing and there's no, like, what we would call perspective, it would be totally flat. But as I'm looking at this, because I'm looking at the very middle, the top and bottom kind of, you know, both have perspective away from me. So I have a curve up here and I have a curve down here. So as I do this, as I draw this profile, I'm going to have to account for some of that. Um, unless I get like full machine drawings or something like that, where they're total 2D flatness, I'm not going to get that perfect. But I think this will be a pretty good, uh, I, I, I can do a pretty good job of, kind of getting what this looks like. So I'm going to go to about here, take this out. This will be that main, the bottom lip right there. I'm going to come in like this. Uh, it looks like I got maybe a step like that. And then these look like they are all rounded over. So I will do that. I will round them. And this kind of goes at an angle like that. Then we have a little lip. So I'll take that in. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to come in here with some arcs real quick and just do this now. Uh, shouts to some people in the uh, in the chat. Thanks for joining in. Sadini from Sri Lanka. Hi, thanks for coming by. Uh, Andy, Barry, good to see you. Um, hi, folks. Thanks for joining us on... This wonderful Friday afternoon, evening, morning, where are you at? Day, good day. That's why I say good day. Guten Tag. I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second, Aaron. All right. Ask when or under what circumstances, and sometimes I, I know it's you just sort of move forward, but when do you choose to take like some of those arts and say, I'm going to reduce or increase the, the, the size of these? That is, is a good question. Um, yeah, I just snapped standard arcs there. Um, because I really didn't have a reason to think about doing anything Different. In fact, they're not even uniform. I just kind of arbitrarily threw them in there to get that geometry. Um, and if I pick on them, they are all 12 sides, which is the default arc. Um, with something like this, with as small as this is going to be, it might actually make sense to have these be lower quality. So I may actually want to take these and drop them to like six sides. And I don't think... I don't think with these, you'll actually be able to, to tell much of a difference. If I come in here, let's see. If I hit 12 to 6, yeah. A little bit, but I think in the grand scheme. I think that is, that's one of the things that, that's an excellent question. I think that's one of the things you think about when you're a more advanced modeler, perhaps. You think about optimizing your model as you go. Um, it's something that I don't think about very often. <laughs> I, I forget about needing to, to keep an eye on those sorts of things, and that's why I end up with huge models sometimes. But yeah, I think with something as curvy as this model is going to be, this is going to have a lot of curves on it, a mm -hmm. lot of geometry. Keeping an eye on those sorts of things are probably a great idea. So if I look at this, 
This arc is 20, but that's okay. This makes up a bulk of the body. I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, I don't have, do you have a hard and fast like time that you make sure you go check or anything like that? I don't. And um, I think it's such a personal preference. I, I can't imagine that anybody could have like a set rule that they could write down and be like, this is exactly when right. you should make it four segments, eight segments or 27 segments. 27 is actually, I mean, it's, it's kind of the, the go-to number. The preferred, yeah, the default should be anyways. If it wasn't, um, yet, if it wasn't before, it is now. I like that. Setting standards, uh, folks. That's what we do. <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned in the comments that Tyson was a little low on the audio. Um, and uh, Joe, do you have that little red box has the dials on it? You could turn his up just a little bit if you wanted. I'm going to do that. I'm cranking it all the way to 11, though. Well, I like oh, the boy. comments. Somebody said I'm, I'm heckling from the audience and actually like that imagery quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe down back there. <laughs> Just shouting from the rafters. Just... Hey, what's, what's going on, guys? <laughs> All right. I think this piece up here is like hollow, too. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to come over like this. You it's a little hat on top. You don't think that's solid? Just a big old solid piece of cast iron? I don't. I think it's more like a fin to disperse a little bit of heat. Oh, we are making stuff up, by the way, in case you're new here. Ah, <laughs> uh, heat dispersal fin. I, it doesn't feel like dispersing the heat is a thing you do with a stove. <laughs> I think its whole purpose is to make heat. Give the heat to the people. It could be, but look. See, yeah. see this? This is why I think that. See how that little, it's light here and then it's darker here. I guess it could just be a shadow, but it makes me think that this is like not solid. I think Jody is just thinking it's solid cast iron because he, you know, he deadlifts like 900 pounds a day. And that's kind <laughs> well, of. Well, yeah, it just like... seems, seems to me that you want the top of that thing to weigh as close to 200 pounds as possible. All right. Well, I got the mouse, so respectfully, suck it. <laughs> Here, I, I'll make I, it a little bit bigger. How's this? How's this better? I appreciate the... Uh, there we go. A little more girth for you. The politeness. It'll still be Thank heavy, you. I promise. All right, I'm going to grab a circle. And uh, the default number of sides on a circle is 24. I'm going to bump up to 48. Um, Even though 27 is superior. And I'm going to grab that circle, tools, follow me, boom. Wow. Holy cow, you're done. All right, join us next week when Tyson's <laughs> going to show us how to. All right, so I'm going to take, I want to get rid of a little bit, some stuff. I don't want this ring going around here. Um, so I'm just going to grab it and. Hide it. Good I'm going to grab this now and make this all. Why are you arguing with me? Make it into a group. I have no reason to make it a component right now. Um, I know that question has come up more than one time. Do you make something a group or a component? And of course, there's always reasons to do one or the other. I'm making a group because for me, it's just temporary geometry. Plus, I know that I'm going to be using uh, solid tools in a few minutes. So um, I am going to be messing with this. It. Yeah, it needs to be a group for that process. All right. So, hey, you know what we haven't done lately? Ever, No. actually, what? to look at it. Shame. It's a good thing. We, good thing we got that kid in the audience to uh, to keep you honest. <laughs> that's that's the ghost of the studio. I think <laughs> that's the phantom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good thing the ghost is good or better at saving than me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab this, push this down a little bit. That ring got a little bit big. 
Hey, Aaron, because I, I know you, you were really looking for a way to make more this more ambitious. Somebody mentioned it looks a little like a chess piece. So I think you, I, I'd like to see you make a whole chess board of pot-bellied stoves. Ooh, that could be fun. <laughs> the time we have left. Right. We, we, could, we could pass that back and forth, Tyson. <laughs> What are you going to be doing for the next year? Making chess you. pieces. <laughs> All right. So I have this piece right here. Um, the door. So the door has its own geometry here. And the door also follows the curves of the top. So what I want to do is I don't want to try to go model this in 3D space because that would be just a silly, silly thing to do. What I'm going to do instead is... I'm going to model this in 2D and then intersect that geometry with the door and then break that geometry. So let's let's do that. Um, I want this to be symmetrical, so I'm going to draw a line like this and then I'm going to draw a line whoops, down the center of that. Oop, am I in the group? I am. Right, there we go. Out of the group. I'm free. Draw a line like that, and then I'm going to draw a line straight down. So Andy is confused that you don't have a, a shortcut for follow me. Do you have a good reason why you have not bothered actually, to do that? Actually, I think I do. Hold on. Let me let me see something. I thought it was going to be something yeah. kind of like the laugh track, where it's like, you can't tell me to have a shortcut for follow me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not the boss of me. Um, I actually do have a shortcut key. I just forget about it because it's a newer shortcut key for me. After being shamed previously? <laughs> yep. Oh, I heard about it. All right, so I'm going to draw an arc over here. I always I always struggle to remember which side I'm pulling that first handle from, but I don't know why that is. I, I just, just really... Okay, there we go. All right, now... This line, this thing, has a couple of offsets. So I'm going to do something like this, and like this, and like this. Because I, what I'm seeing in there is like a bump, flat bump, and then we go to this main section here. So Andy thinks that this will be a perfect use case for dra using drape. Have you thought about that? Think about that. It, it could. Who's causing these problems? I mean, who's asking these questions? Same guy that was talking smack about your follow me. Basically, it sounds like Andy just wants to be the one doing the show. Hey, I will I will pass the mouse, buddy. Just come on in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm uh it could be. Um but it's always one of the cool things, right, about SketchUp. That's one of the things that I personally like so much is there's so many different ways to do the same thing. Here's what I was considering doing. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a group. I'm going to stand it upwards. Where's my midpoint? Bring that up vertically to the top of that right there. All right. And now here's what I was thinking of doing. Um, basically, what I want to do is I want each of these lines to intersect the face. So if I come here, bring this back through like this. Actually, you know what? I, I want to give a little bit of a gap because right now this is, if I pull this straight back here along the green, I'm right up against the bottom here. So I'm going to just raise it up just a touch, just enough to like that. So, so I have a little bit of a space between the bottom of the door and this, this piece right here. So what I'm thinking of doing is grabbing this piece, extending this through the face, just the face, the first side, then coming out here, grabbing this, intersect face with model, which should break it, and then grab this right here and group it separate. Now, get rid of this, and now we should be able to take this guy through. And now if I come in here, grab this face, intersect face with model. That'll give me some more, 
more intersections. I don't know how this is going to work out. All right, so I have one piece here, two pieces here. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to come in here, grab this, make a group, grab this, make a group, and then one last, one last time. Did I delete the whole thing? I, I over, I OD'd, I over deleted. <laughs> Classic. Classic, Aaron. All right, grab that. And now I'm going to come in here. Sorry, make group, make group. All right, and now I want one more intersection. And that's this right here. Except I don't, what I don't want is I don't want two intersections. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this, get rid of this. I'm gonna triple click this line and delete it and just pull this last one through, which is just gonna give me the exterior most intersection, the exteriorist. And then I can come in here, intersect base with model. Now I can, it's like a piece of butter. All right, there we go. And then make this into one more group. Whoa. That's as far as I've gotten with the plan here. <laughs> from here, you're going to wing it. <laughs> How is that different from anything else I do around here? <laughs> um, okay, so there's a couple things I feel like I could do here. I could take, so what I need to do now is I need to get depth to this. So I could take my pieces here. I have four pieces. I could take them. I could slide them. My blue axis is, is a little weird because I modeled this thing laying down and then stood it up. But I'm on the blue axis coming straight out. So I could come out. I'm about to have a seizure, Aaron. Yeah, I apologize for that. So what you do is you start to move it and then you go and you type the value you want to move it. Yeah, except nothing is modeled to scale right here. So let's let's try an inch. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe if you'd started at scale. And then I could grab this group and this group and move them back along the blue, maybe half that distance. So that gives me 2D surfaces uh, where I want them. So now you ask, or you should be asking, well, how do I fill that all in? How do I fill that all in? Thanks, Jody. Um, if I was Stitching. to explode this, there's a butt, don't worry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, Stitch. Some of this will be easy. The top will be like super flat like that. And I could, coming down the sides then, I would have to, every place there's a line, I'd have to come in here. And if I was just sitting around and like relaxing and enjoying a Saturday afternoon and I wanted to, you know, stitch a little, this would be what I would do. Um, but it's not Saturday afternoon, it's Friday and we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves, which means you guys get to enjoy yourselves too, so whatever. For that reason, what I would probably do instead is undo a whole bunch, take these surfaces now. I'm going to copy these surfaces in case things go awry, which means it's Latin for how things usually go. And then I can grab one, two, three, four, explode and now i can actually use an extension like joint push pull to put the depth on here which is going to be i think the way to go let's go check it out let's go to tools let's go to view tool palettes and turn joint push pull on all right so with this specific joint push pull i don't want to do a standard joint push pull a st standard joint push pull on a round surface moves all the faces normal to their individual faces. So you end up getting growing basically. So you take a ball and you, you do a normal push pull and it's like the ball is swelling. It's going out to every face. What I want to do is I want everything to just come straight forward. So I'm going to do a vector push pull. This is a little, little green one. Um, I barely remember the colors. There's the, the icons for push pull have little letters on them. The letters are four pixels tall. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
Zoom in on your own screen I, and yeah, let I just, us know what it says. I happen to remember that vector is green. Otherwise, I kind of usually wait for tooltips to show up here, but I do remember vector being green. So I'm gonna grab vector push pull. I'm gonna grab this outside one and I'm gonna pull it this way. And last time I just came through one inch. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. I want the door to have a little bit of thickness. So I'm gonna say like 1.5 inches. Now, Aaron, I, I went in to, oh, that's working. I wanted to interject um, based on an earlier comment, but I ran away. I ran off to SketchUp and I, and I tested it because I was just curious. And um, I believe it was Andy's comment earlier that like it's a good use of the drape tool. And just to give some credit to kind of a, a different idea, a different approach, um, it actually would work really well. Uh, you just need to use it vertically, but you could take your original, all of the shapes, stick them on top, turn everything vertically, and intersect basically all of those edges at once without doing it individually. So, but again, you just have to know that you have to turn it vertically. So it's kind of an interesting, yeah, absolutely it works. Cool. Just know the differences. Awesome. Again, that's one of the great things about SketchUp, right? Is there's so many ways to skin to do those cats. Oh, sorry. Thought we were going a different direction. Oh. No, not a fan of cats. Sorry. I'm really good at doing it wrong, no matter which way I do it. <laughs> All right. So with with uh, yeah, that's that's a good point. Like drape and. A lot of those tools, those sandbox tools work great, but you do have to remember to take your work surface and lay it flat because a lot of times you have to use a modifier key or something like that if you want to do something other than move up and down. Have you yeah, have you ever seen a sandbox laying on its side? The sand just falls to the side. That is not very, nearly as fun. Yeah. Very logical. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about doing this, I think, is with auto fold, I can grab that like that. And I can actually pull that out to give that a little bit more, even more depth, because that was not nearly as thick as I thought it was going to be. Now that I have it connected, uh, those side faces are just going to connect, just going to stretch right out with it. Awesome. Got it to order. All right. So it's interesting because I've never, I mean, I even used to live in a log cabin and our stove was not pot belly it was like i guess your standard wood burning stove with big glass door in the front so do you have to feed logs down into the bottom pot no i believe this this is the door that opens up that you put the fuel in right but is it there is there a, a platform inside of that and you just set your stuff in there or are you like reaching in and setting your your wood down into the bottom pot so from what i've seen this down this this section right here is the air intake right so you adjust this to let air come in through it the fire happens here and then all the heat and the smoke oh here's a perfect spot to do this the heat so the air comes through here encourages the burn in the, the pot here and then all the heat and smoke comes up through this and then gets funneled to the back to go out the chimney um so what happens is all that heat ends up running across this top plate but yeah as far as i know this is a big burner i'd imagine there's a grate or something somewhere to keep the the wood out of here but maybe not I don't yeah know. there's got to be a grate that way the big chunks will stay somewhere and the ash will just fall at the bottom for cleaning it right this seems so much messier than or so much more complicated than the wood burning stove i'm used to well not all of us had fancy glass fronted stoves like you i maybe you all did you're just lying to me i don't know yeah, that's true we do lie to you a lot so it could be all right, I'm going to throw a hinge on here. This hinge is going to be fairly simple. I'm going to put a rectangle, pull it out vertically, throw a couple of rounded over tabs on here, and then put a round piece here that's going to drop back to the, uh, the stove body. Um, I'm going to do this arbitrarily to start and then just kind of adjust it as I go. So I'm going to come on this face and... out of context there we go 
I'm going to draw a straight up rectangle. Oh, come on. Just give me a rectangle. All right, there we go. Actually, you know what I should do? I should just do this. The reason we got a reference photo, buddy. I'm buddy in that. I feel like maybe in the future we should start buying one of these, whatever we're modeling, and that way we can like get actual dimensions. I like that. Can If you can just work on that budget, that would be super yeah. duper. Yeah, the first thing we're, we're going to be modeling is a, uh, is a 1963 split window Corvette. <laughs> and the, the other thing that, that I have to laugh about, about that is not only, uh, yeah, find the budget, but also Aaron and I have to decide before the morning of. <laughs> <laughs> Mad scram scramble every Friday morning. God, hey, Jody, could you pick up a, uh, a Humvee on your way in? Because uh... <laughs> Fine. It's not practical. Is that what you want me to say? No, no, it is. You say whatever you want. I don't know. All right, that's cool. All right, so this comes up right about to the middle. I'm gonna model a what a thirty gun schooner next week. So get get one of those in here to the Midwest. Schooners had guns. You're a schooner. <laughs> I don't know galleon. What what's the what's the better? I would call. I would say galleon. All right, I'll defer. But I could be wrong. I'm sure that there is going to be someone that is going to correct me because that seems to be what they do. All right, so this this hinge actually does ride the curve, so I do have to turn it. I was trying to keep it vertical, but that's not going to work. So what I did here, I got this originally mocked up. I'm going to come on this face right here. Actually, no, I'm going to go... I'm going to re re move it this way, twist it this way, grab this end and bring it up to where it would meet there. There we go. Like that. And then whenever I have to put a full round over a shape like this, here's what I usually do. I don't try to do it at the end because it's impossible. Well, it's not. What I could do is figure out where the midpoint is here. Break this, take this line, rotate it, to this line, and then I know that this straight across is half and bring that up to the middle. So I could do that. Obviously, that wasn't hard. I just did do that. What you can do instead, I guess this is a, it's the same, it's the same amount of steps. It's where do you want to invest your time? Where do you want to invest your time and energy? I could come across here like this, pull it out to a half circle. Then grab this, move it right there at the end. Same process. Um, I don't know. I guess either one works. I thought I had something that was like fantastic there, and now I'm realizing that it's all right. So yeah, all right is not quite fantastic, but it's better than oh, that was a bad idea. Yeah, it's solidly K. How is that K? Meh. <laughs> Uh, Manfred asked what uh, push pull tool is what where is that command located? Uh, I think the default uh, keyboard shortcut is P, but then it's also on the uh, the regular tool set. It looks like a little uh, square with an arrow coming out of it. Push pull. All right, I'm gonna make a couple circles. I'm in separate context here. I'm gonna pull this down quarter inch. I'm going to offset this out a little bit more. I'm going to pull this all the way down to here. All right, so now we're getting there. Now this just has to get connected back here. So I'm going to grab this, make it a group. I'm going to come into it. See how I my axis is all the technical term is wonky. wonky. Not nah, see Matt knew it. He's it's wonky. Funky, which is uh, usually involves a bass guitar, so I don't maybe it's not the same thing. Slap it. Slap any bass. I'm gonna come in here. 
I'm going to click here. Show hidden, bring that straight up. And now our axis matches the direction of, let's see how my container changed there too. So this guy did not do that. Oh no, I did do that too because I had him laying flat. So now it doesn't care about the world axis. It's aligned to the axis that's actually in this thing, which is important because the next thing I want to do is come in and draw a line like that, draw a line like that, connect that. See you, Keggy. Thanks for watching. Aw, see ya. Um, somebody asked why push-pull sometimes leaves surfaces. Like when you did the bottom of that um, hinge holder thing, uh, there was like a surface left over. You know, sometimes it erases it, but sometimes it stays. Um, you know why that is? I do. I don't want to root for anybody <laughs> though. So if you guys figure it out, let me know. I'll play it through right. <laughs> to test. Um, ooh, that's not right. Um, yeah, so what happens is just like all of SketchUp, if you create ge geometry on top of existing geometry, it disappears. And push pull is the same. If you have geometry there, and you connect it onto something else, it may disappear. Um, I know there's there's certain times where stuff does disappear and there's other times where it doesn't. And I don't always, I can't always say 100% why that always is, but sometimes uh, you'll see it just, yeah, disappear and sometimes it'll stick around. Is the so. ghost of the studio haunting your model? Maybe? Yeah. Or because there's probably some reasoning behind it, but. Face. Because <laughs> faces are surfaces in SketchUp. We call them faces. Okay. Sometimes I call faces surfaces in real life. Why you is can, your surface doing that? You can. I mean, that's an option. <laughs> uh, there's a surface I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> I sure would like to punch that guy in the surface. I really, <laughs> I really miss, miss my children seeing their surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. All right, I am going to start onto this, not a sign of, um, it's not, a nuclear not nuclear, yeah, it's not a nuclear thing. It is, in fact, Radiation. just a vent. Is the vent. All right, how many, I got 48 here, 48 divided by six. Ask Jody. Ask Jody. What was the question? Chat. Come on, chat. What's 48 divided by 6? Oh, <laughs> what is that? 5 plus 3? 8. 8? I totally believe that. I, I'm not even going to check. That's mental. It's mental it's, maths. It's mental, All right. right? So what I'm going to do then is draw a line straight across, and then I'm going to come down. I'm going to count the segments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're oh. like a cheerleader. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. Or a, a dance one, teacher, two, dance instructor. Okay. Yep. And a one, <laughs> and a two. And I don't know any dance moves. Swoon, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> stagger, stagger, crawl. Anybody ever watch? Anybody? Yep. Yellow beard? Maybe not. Don't know it. It's a movie from when you were still dead. Ah, uh, yes. Those are the days. 7X. Oh, something wasn't right. Jody's math was off. No. No, there, I had <gasps> both Transom and Lawrence confirmed. Eight is correct. Okay. I may have I may have counted wrong. Let's. It, it does happen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. You gotta, you gotta be, be careful. careful. When counting, nice. <laughs> I just got some got some real gems going on here. Today. Five, six, seven, eight. Was there an echo effect on all of those, or was that part of the original? Uh, no, that was the original. Yeah, but 
if something doesn't sound quite as cool, just throw a boatload of reverb on and it automatically sounds a lot better. Boom. Even Jody sounds better with reverb? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything, Tyson. Well, that was... I wish I had control over people's mics. I would be just <laughs> blasting reverb right now. <laughs> All right. You can auto tune us. <laughs> I'm not saying you sound bad, but you could sound better. <laughs> All right, so we got this. Oh, this guy's going to come up here plus a little more. Um, so these pieces, these are the outside. So I'm going to come in here and draw a line parallel to this line. Back to there, and then try the same thing over here. One segment in, parallel to this one. That last one, that was a little short. That's why that guy had that weird looking thing there. How's that look? Um, MR in the comments was asking about a shortcut for repeating an action. Um, and I know there's a couple different ways. I think what he was referring to or they're referring to is about uh, an array, like you did a radial array with that, um, which follows any move or rotate or um, are there other actions you can do that you can array? Move and rotate. That's that's it. That's all of them. Those are they. Yeah. So after after you do the first move, you can uh, without hitting anything else, you hit X and then number of times you want to repeat it, um, or you can move it from the very first to the very last spot and then hit divide by how many copies you want. Um, and then also in this case. Uh, repeating an action is push pull. If you push pull one face a certain um, dimension, then you double click on this another face, it'll move at that same amount. Um, yeah, Matt's got it. That's what I said there. But thanks, thanks, Matt. Nice. If I had if, if I had access to the soundboard, I would do like an applause or a cheering mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, I can uh, I can fill you in for it. Oh, no, not that just. Uh, thank you. That just sounds self-serving when you do it. No, because it was a request. <laughs> he does requests. Yeah, I'll be taking requests all uh, all afternoon. I will suggest uh, Matt is absolutely correct in everything he said, but one of the things that we found, you can do an array and you can put X then the number, then hit enter for the array, or you can put the number then X. And what we suggest is actually you put the number then x because you can assign x to a keyboard shortcut and once you do then by hitting x first you've gone out of the array function mm. oh good point I was, I was i was gonna say x is literally just a letter it's its own shortcut but yeah i see what you're saying but there's uh i know aaron's done stuff on youtube and we've got stuff on campus so by all means we've got a, a lot of a lot of stuff going on to learn about arrays they are awesome yeah it's an awesome way to uh it's funny when i watch people who uh who i respect their their modeling skills so somebody like uh liam keating or uh well let's talk about liam specifically liam does a lot of spaceships and satellites and these cool sci-fi looking things and what he'll do is take or, uh, luke whitelock was the other one i was thinking of they'll take fairly simple geometry and just repeat it a bunch of times and all of a sudden it looks super complicated. But it's actually just this one component, not just. There's artistry there too, <laughs> not minimizing anything it's they literally do. All, all they did was use a component. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I could almost do that. Yeah, I've been trying, I've been talking to my, uh, my boss about arrays, but they keep deflecting. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> that was quick, Matt. Well done. Well done. Yeah. All right. Talk to you. I was, I've been sitting here waiting for Aaron to shut up so I could use my joke, and Matt is immediately, he's there. <laughs> I have that sound effect set to X as a keyboard shortcut. <laughs> so. Way to keep it topical. All right. Yeah. I'm going to pull this back in. So Bill wants to know if you weld the segments, do you lose the vertical lines when you push pull up? Yes. 
All right, one last thing. I got a little, little handle right here in the middle of this. Looks like it's actually in the middle. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to put a circle right here. I'm going to pull the circle down to the face here. And then I'll pull it up some amount. And then just manually alt erase this. All right. So there we go. Make that into a group. I don't know why I really, I really put a lot behind the P in that group. I, I popped that group right out. All right. I rotate it to vertical and I'm going to grab it by, I'm going to be moving it around quite a bit right now, but I'm going to grab it by this piece right here. That's the center of the back of that piece. And I'm going to come over to this right now and show me some edges. So look at my hidden. And what I want to try to do is drop this on an intersection if I can. It puts it pretty much middle, which is, I think, right there. All right, so that bottom looks like it's in a good spot. Now I want to rotate it back so it lays all the way into it. So I'm going to use uh, my rotate command. I'm going to hit that point that is I'm using as the, the intersection point. It's the only spot that's touching the face right now uh, on the red axis. And I'm going to come up to the top. I'm going to grab my middle point here and I'm going to rotate that back and it's probably not going to hit an intersection but it should hit a line right there all right so now that is more or less flat to the face um, now what I could do is I could come in and decide how far do I want to push this in maybe I'll grab the middle point here and pull that back to the line and then because it's a flat shape following a curve, of course, it's not blended in, but uh, because this is a separate group, I can just grab this, put that through like that, and then we get. Hey, or do you, would you have an actual collection that you keep all of these uh, live stream models in? Um, yeah, if you go to, oh, models. Yeah. I put them up on my page usually when I'm done. I just upload them to my page on uh, Warehouse. So if you go to the only Aaron on warehouse, you could find it. Okay. Cool. Um, that was a little too far. That came in too far here. Let me do it again. I like the idea of it being extra thick like that. And then it's sort of like a miniature bank vault sort of thing. It seems extra secure. I think that looks good. All right, so last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come into this guy, this face right here. I'm going to select this piece, intersect face with model. It'll actually probably give me, yeah, some junk, but delete, 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 delete. Triple click lines. Here's a spot where I could use the extension cleanup to get rid of all those. But for me, it's just quicker to do what I just did. There we go. Awesome. That's on there. <laughs> okay. So now we just have to go in and add all the ribs and your and the feet and you're done. Yeah, let's let's work on this thing right here because it's fancy. The cleaning hatch. We'll call it a cleaning hatch. I think it is. I think it's both. I think it's a temperature control because I think you change the amount of air coming in. But yeah, I also think you flip it down because it looks like it's hinged to uh, clean out the ash and such. All right. Or maybe so, this is where you put your pizza. Mmm, pizza. I'm going to do a couple things here. Uh, I'm going to draw a line like that. And I'm going to draw a line like... So this is the width of this thing. Um, I want to draw this, but I want this to line up because you see how this, this bottom tray thing lines up perfectly with this piece right here. So what I'm going to do is pull a line out the middle. I'm just going to kind of pull it out arbitrary length. And then I'm going to come over 
that amount and then pull it back like that. And I'll just connect the two up. I'll take that. Okay. Um, now I can look here. I can say from here out to about the end, three, four, and three quarter, we'll call that. Whoops, I didn't quite go back far enough. All right, so if I come from here, this intersection, three foot, four, and three quarter. And then find that, there we go. That's where that line is at. And if I take that now, whoa, 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 whoa. We're going crazy. Stuff got a little nuts. Apologize. Ah. I'll pull that up to here. All right, so that kind of works. I'm going to go ahead and put an arc right here. I'm going to double click to add it to this side, push it down. All right, I like that. Um, I'm going to grab all of that, make it a group, go into that group, and I'm going to select this face and say intersect face with model, which should give me the arc there that I can just push pull down. And now that has a piece that perfectly, oh no, it intersected back here and not back here. Interesting. All right, so sometimes when you do intersections, you'll see this where you have faces that are directly on top of each other. I don't know if this is like a Z fighting rectification thing or what this is, but you have two faces that directly overlap like this. These are on the same spot. So for whatever reason, it didn't see this face as intersecting with this line right here, but I can force that to happen. So I can take it and I can just drop it vertically just a touch like that. And now I can come in, select this face, intersect face with model. That'll give me a new cut line there that I can push down. Boom, and now I can take this back up. Another boom, and there we go. It's like magic. All right, let's smooth. Actually, since I got these weird lines back here, let's just smooth all of it. All right, so that kind of gives us this tray. You do notice that this has a little bit of, it flares out a little bit. I'm going to do that. Um, but I wanted to get this in here all the way first, because then all I have to do is make this one surface, scale it, and I'll get that, that slope. Or I could do a follow me around the footprint to get the slope too. That's an option also. But this is this, that's this, we got this. All right, next thing I have is two shapes. Uh, one is this block comes out of this base shape right here, and then there's a lid that sits on top of it. I think for both of these, what I'm gonna do is draw a 2D profile, and then just do a push-pull, and then set it back into the face. So this guy right here, I'm just gonna take this all the way back beyond where it has to go, and then I'll go up to here, over to here, and now I got, so I need to do this. I'm going to do this with Bezier. This will be the easiest way to do it. I'll start right here and I'll go to the middle of this one. So I'll pull it straight down. And then this guy's going to come out kind of like that. Next one's going to start from here back to here. So I'm going to pull to the point where it's Parallel with that first one. And then... All right. That gives me that shape. I'm going to grab that, make a group. Actually, let's do this. Let's take this and this and this, weld it, Nice. 
Thanks. I'm going to offset it and then offset it again to make my, my door. This may take some fine tuning. We'll see. So you never really hear people talking about like gross tuning, right? It's always only fine tuning. Well, we've talked about how fine means K and also means really good. So maybe it's something to do with that. Maybe, maybe. I mean, this, this tuning is fine. It's fine. It's fine. Or this tuning is gross. Ugh. Or this tuning is 144. I don't know really what gross tuning is. All right. Very nice. So it looks like I'm going to do a little bit more work down here because it kind of looks like what happens here is this maybe moves out a little bit like that. And it's, I think it's hinged. So what I may actually do is come in and maybe... I don't know. So, so many of the comments was asking about subdivisions uh, within SketchUp. Um, they were looking for a, specifically a free uh, extension, but um, what would you guys suggest for subdivision extension? Really, the two that I know of, and I'll, I'll ask Tyson too, I think if you want to do subdivision modeling, you're kind of looking at either sub D from TomTom, Tom, which is a paid extension, or Artisan. Am I missing anybody there? No, sir. The the nice thing about that is, yeah, you have two options. So you don't have to get mired through any anything further. That's it. You've got the full list. You know everything we know. <laughs> if you are, if, if you're gonna go, uh, Artisan is kind of an all-in-one tool. And if you go with Tom Toms, then you'll need a set of tools, you'll need his sub d for subdivision you'll need his vertex tools both of those are paid plugins and you'll need his quad modeling tools and that one's a free version um, but I, we've talked a little bit before both are, are good options so it's not like i think both have trial versions too yeah but you're not going to go wrong get going either way if, if really you're just trying to sub sub uh, division model. Awesome. Yeah, so check them out, report back which one you like better. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm doing some weird stuff here, in case anybody was wondering. Nice. So oh, I got background music for that. Okay. Weird stuff background. <laughs> we just had several suggestions in the comments. A song by Rush, or just talking about uh, fine tuning being a, a reference to instruments playing against each other once they're close. So, do, do you have do you have the um, the orchestra tuning up? <laughs> um, no, but I can make that. Nailed it in one. That's it. <laughs> All right. So I got these shapes made. Uh, this one's the door. Um, and then this piece actually goes up at an angle. You see that right there? So what I'm going to do for that... Um, is think about some things. I'm going to take that, regroup it. I exploded everything as I did the, the push pulls. Um, for this one right here, so I'm looking at what, so it goes from here back to, let's come up. All right, so that is the shape that I want to cut off. So what I would, what I what I would do, what my brain goes towards is making a cutter for solid tool. 
that's just kind of naturally where I go when I have to chop shapes up like this. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to rotate it vertical. And then let me push pull that through here and see what that's going to look like. Close. Ooh, Lawrence, Lawrence has a, uh, a trivia question here. In the orchestra, which musical instrument do they all tune up against? Like what I assume is the main the main instrument that goes first and everyone else is tuned based off that. You guys know? Snare drum. Violin. <laughs> That's right. You get a good sound and snare, you know, everything else just follows from there. Can you play me a C on your snare real quick? That's right. I mean, the, <laughs> the, the range of the snare drum is really... That's what it's all about. <laughs> I feel like it seems like it's an oboe or something like that, but I'm a little... Yeah. Some people in the chat saying triangle. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, Andy's calling me out. Ooh, Andy's on me. You're just... Woo! He's working me. Um, he said model half of it. Absolutely right. I could have made this component. I could have cut this in half. Um, but then I wouldn't have been able to use as much rotate. I'd just be using rotate once and I like rotate. So anyhow, this is what I got. All right, let's go ahead and uh, tool palettes. Let's bring up our solid tools. And I'm just gonna use subtract. So I'm gonna grab this one and say, just subtract that volume from this volume. And then select this, subtract that volume from this volume. And we have our two pieces. There's a little more detail to go in the door, but I can't I can't stop now. I gotta I gotta I gotta see what it looks like in place. I'm gonna grab it by the middle, bring that up here. I'm gonna start by putting it right at the front. So I'm gonna snap it to the middle of this platform we made. There we go. Ooh yeah. I'm gonna slide nice. it back. Also, Lawrence did say oboe is the correct answer. See, I said it. I knew it. How'd you know Nice, that? good call. So and Tiago true. called it in the chat as well. So, but he did say he's a maestro. Um, no one tell my daughter who is an oboe player that I did not know that one. Oboe has <laughs> such a distinct sound. I don't know how you could, I mean, you can easily spot it, especially if it's the only instrument playing. Are you saying no, your kids don't watch every live stream you do? Uh, only because they're in school. It's required of them during the summer. Yes, but live streams <laughs> are available to rewatch later from the channel. That is true. But it's not live it's then. Then it's just a stream. recorded stream. I think it, I don't even think you call it a stream at that point. I think you just call it. It's just a video. A video. It's just another video. Ugh. Whoa. Jody was straight up disgusted with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Killing it. Watch a video. <laughs> Can't believe we're going to be on a video later. That's <laughs> I didn't horrible. sign up to be on a video. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. All right, let me get some break lines here. Come in here. I'm going to grab a bunch of stuff here and just break it now, too. Nice. One of those days you don't want to wake up. <laughs> so. Was that the end of it? <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> you don't want to wake up. Oh. I don't remember the rest of the Limp Biscuit lyrics. I'm sure they were was... very deep and insightful because that's kind of what he did. Yeah, I... Durst is known for that. Yeah. I feel like probably there's just swear words in the next yeah. the next line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we I think know you're... that Matt didn't I think you're swear. Right. I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, I I mean, the next song on that album, he's just like, it's one of those days you got to solve quantum equations and you have to figure out why the enzymes aren't producing, you know, the, the full range of that, that. That guy was crazy in the, you know. Mm -hmm. That kind of uh, edu educame, edutainment, you know, the, the, the new metal blending with uh, yes. sort of, you know, high end grad level uh, biology and physics was, that's what people consider Durstian today. <laughs> Durstian. <indeed>. Durstian. <laughs> Can we have a Durstian award in here? 
Next week, we're modeling the trophy for Durstiest in the Office. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not something anybody wants to win. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just going to merge these guys. I didn't... So I could have gone through... This is not a solid. Um, my main body right now is not solid, so I can't just do a merge real quick. But I can grab these three pieces, group them, come in here, explode that. I don't need this anymore. All right, so that should, and I grab these two, explode those. All right, now we're down to a pretty close to single model. Get rid of that. Get rid of the ends of this. And then triple click the line and delete it. All right. And then, hey, there we go. So here's that little, I was talking about making the, the angle there. See lines I gotta clean up and I can't even talk. I gotta fix it. Okay, so if I grab this, and I hit scale, I should be able to option. This won't be perfect, but it will give me, there we go, just that little, little something special, little, little something extra. Yeah, I buy it. Yeah. Awesome. Looks right. too plain. You should do like add some greed leaves to it. Oh yes, it's, it's time to put the things on. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna put a couple of uh, vents here. We'll do it like this, have it sh closed, and then we'll drop some knobs on there. We'll start to get some screws on here, and then some foots. Footies. Just dr again, draw these in 2D. Uh, draw a line between here, that way I can Jody, do you know, someone mentioned that uh, we, we announced that we have our iPad version editor in beta. Yes, sir. Do we still have open slots? Can we post a link for anybody who wants to? So if you haven't already that? closed down the banner at the top of the forum, then anybody going to the forum should see a link that takes you off to the, like, the sign-up stuff. Uh, as far as open slots, that's a, it's a little tricky. They're basically, it's sort of a gated... They're bringing people in as they feel they can handle all the feedback. So while a bunch of people have applied, you're just putting your place in line. I'm sure that at some point everybody will be in, but everybody that has a but people can applied, sign up, right? Yeah, you can still. I'll sign put up. the link in the sketch of fry pad. So I have that. Oh, wow, nice. that's nice. Good topical, <laughs> timely. That was that was weird. That was I could definitely tell it was Mike Tadros though. Yeah, I, I heard I heard that voice. For 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 everybody out there, Tadros is the product manager for the iPad, so that's uh just, just it's his fault. It's his baby. Mm -hmm. I mean baby. Yeah, he worked very hard to get it. Sketch of iPad. Good work, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is, uh, we, we, even internally, but the Sketch for iPad as a, as an app, because you can imagine or not try to imagine how you take all the interactions of a SketchUp and a mouse and you move those to an iPad and to gestures and, and we integrate it with the pencil, but it's, it's in my opinion, a really great adapt, uh, adaptation. Well, and everything I'm seeing from people in the beta, like the power users, I've seen several people that have said, you know, they haven't used they haven't used their desktop version since they got the iPad version. So, yeah, it's incredible. And like like Tyson was mentioning, it is kind of built from not the ground up. Like it's still the SketchUp experience you know, but it's not just like ported over like using like SketchUp for web, you know, on an iPad would be like it's built specifically for the pencil and for all the gestures. So it feels very like fluid, whether you're using, you know, the Apple keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse or using the actual pencil or just your finger. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. 
So sign up for that beta. Keep an eye out. I'm waiting for the the, the Jedi edition that'll let me use my mind. Keep waiting. Mm, it'll come soon enough. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. who knows? Machine learning should be able to do that. A lot of shoulds in there, Jody. <laughs> I'm shooting all over the place. <laughs> Keep your shits to yourself. Well, and then once you get that, Jody, I see a couple of people suggested we model an oboe, so uh, we'll we'll leave that one to you. It's all uh, you, buddy. Okay, as soon as the Jedi version comes out. <laughs> I. So what, what do we, we had a request for a trombone or a saxophone or something like that. So I just for fun went and looked at one and I laughed for a solid three or four minutes because that, that is the most ridiculous thing to try to model. Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like, forget it. I feel like you must be talking about the saxophone. Cause, yeah, because trombone saxophone. seems like it'd be really okay, straightforward. But yeah. Although doing the bell of any any of those horned, those brass instruments, be curious to kind of see the process for that. Mm -hmm. Those you can do, but yeah, saxophone, if I'm thinking of it correctly, is sort of a tapered shape all along every bend, all the way yeah. back. Oh, and yeah. there's just so many keys and all the little, pipes yeah. and things and <laughs> dealies and stuffs. They're just yeah. called, they're called music greeblies. Yeah, they are. Mm. <laughs> just ornamentation. So many music greeblies. Andy's wondering, he stepped out. He's wondering if we missed, uh, if he missed us saving. Of course, the obvious answer is yes. Save. She was so boring. Paul, I'm not going to do a saxophone. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that was about, but we're good. All right, so there we go. Got our little vents there. It looks like I got a knobby. Sticking out of here. So I'm going to use the geometry I already have. I'll drop a line straight down. Put a circle here. Okay. Um, D cube, I imagine working with the iPad will be difficult without shortcuts. Um, I mean, the way the UI is like built on the iPad app is very kind of intuitive. It's much different from the well, not much different, but it is different than the desktop version and going through just with like, you know, having like the pencil on your in your drawing hand and then using your other hand for the shortcuts works pretty well. But you could also use the um, you can use the keyboard, you know, the Apple keyboard or whatever third party keyboard that has a full keyboard, too. So, um, yeah, but it's it's definitely designed that the keyboard is not your is not the focal point. Yeah. Yeah, it's secondary for sure. It's definitely built for the using the touchscreen interface and stuff. So, and Aaron and I, we've agreed as we've discussed it, like that even as as amazing implementation it is. Yeah, you miss. If we are so used to keyboard shortcuts that for those of us who sort of build our SketchUp world around that, it, it's it's just a completely different paradigm. It's still a really good one, but yeah, it's definitely different. Yeah. Takes some getting used to. Very much so. Uh, and Transom also was wondering if it works on iPad Air. Like, is it only iPad Pro? I can't remember. Yeah, it works on other versions. Like, it'll work on the mini that's out today. The main thing is the version of uh, iPad OS you can in install, which I don't remember what the limit is. Uh, and then... I don't know, just in case of having something new enough that it's doesn't run like complete poo. Right. Okay. Let me see. I'll see if I can. It's probably it's, the link you shared earlier that has like your system requirements. Yeah. Is anybody on here uh, on the on the live stream using it themselves? Anybody on here besides employees on the beta? It says it'll work with an iPad, a Pro, an Air, or a Mini, as long as it's got iOS 13.4 or better. There you go. Didn't say anything about having to have a pencil or a mouse or a keyboard. Although they probably enhance it. Let 
Dcube uses the uh, iPad for AR presentation. Yeah, that's a great, great use for it. And the iPad app has built-in like send to AR. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah, because you can you can view stuff in AR with it. it's it, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, just I mean the the iPad Pro too. Um, not that you have to have the iPad Pro, but man, it's it's been pretty impressive to see where like that technology is gone. Just the tablet in general. It's 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 pretty cool. I've, mm -hmm. I've, honestly, I like I've I've tried that whole. I could just have an iPad as my only computer. I've considered it, but my inability to run SketchUp has always sort of pushed me back. And I'm still not quite there, but I feel might like, be your time. I feel like there's a uh, it's getting easier and easier to use a just a tablet you're carrying around. Yeah. Wait, did that like? <laughs> It's a, it's okay, Andy. If you if you only eat the editable kinds of apples, and that's the only apple you consume, but uh, just make sure that if you have apples and peanut butter, that it's crunchy peanut butter. So that's an interesting comment, Tyson. Because apparently it's there are the people way, there are Jody. there are people that only like uh, smooth, soft, creamy. I guess creamy is what we're looking for here. The wrong kind of peanut butter, and I that just don't correct. understand. It is the wrong kind. It's and it's. I'm embarrassed to say that in my household, I'm the only crunchy. Like I feel like I've somehow failed as a father <laughs> because I'm the only one eating crunchy peanut butter. Okay, so I am also in this boat. I have also failed, but I I consider for our kids that you know this this there is time there is growth. Yeah, so here's here's my my sad reality. I don't know if this is what you're doing, Tyson, but I've got a chop slap in the kitchen and I pour real peanuts into it and I chop slap those until they're crunchy. Then I add that to my weak, smooth peanut butter. Custom peanut butter. I like oh, yeah. yeah but this sounds like something we need to bring to base camp right here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing like a snack buffet where we have apples and a jar of creamy and a jar of crunchy, and they're both on scales. DIY. <laughs> there you go. So at the end of the day, we can see which is the supreme peanut butter. I, I, are you going to question the premise? Do, do you eat creamy peanut Damn butter? Damn straight. Oh. <laughs> Damn smooth. <laughs> yeah. No, Damn I mean, skippy. I, I, I feel like oh, ooh, I, I nice. feel like we almost missed that one. Yeah, nice, well done. <laughs> I do feel like that henceforth conversations are going to be slightly more forced with Aaron because of his his weird peanut butter. Just call me the smooth nuts. guy. Yeah, smooth brain. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I was insulted by that or not. Oh, that's a that's a modern insult. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are getting a few, I, I imagine, across the pond, people who are like, peanut butter in general, what, you guys are disgusting. Nobody likes root beer anywhere, anywhere outside of the, the States, right? <laughs> okay, so here's a real question. So the Weld feature is native. We have a Weld built right into SketchUp 2022 or 2021, right? Correct. That's, yeah, how fancy is that? Everybody's over here talking about how you should be welding. They're ignoring our peanut butter conversation. <laughs> Probably best. Just as well. Wait, what, what, what have I not welded that I should have? I don't know. It's possible that it happened a minute ago, too. Okay. I'm not opposed to it. Just sometimes I miss things, and you guys have to... We got, we got, this, we got this live delay that... Uh... Sorry. We were, I, was, I was just kind of wrapped up in the peanut, peanut butter conversation. That's really... Uh, I had my my blinders on. I could see nothing but peanut butter. Sounds like you need to uh, maybe shower or something. Sorry about that. Use some windshield wipers on that peanut butter and just smear it all over. Yeah, peanut butter is so hard to clean up. It's like just so oily and I'm not dissing it. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. 
Uh, let me peek inside here. Come on, man. Oh yeah, how's how's the stove going, Aaron? Oh yeah, stove. <laughs> what this whole thing? I'm greeblying it. I don't know what any of these parts are for. I'm assuming this is some sort of a latch, but. <laughs> All right, it needs to be bigger. I'm getting a weird delay on my computer, too. I don't know what's going on. Like lag or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's too many, too many people. Maybe it's because I've been putting creamy peanut butter in it instead of crunchy. I don't know. Nice, nice. Ugh, let's see, there's, there's this weird, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. There's a thing here too, but I cannot tell what it is. Looks like it's a, maybe it's a latch. I don't know. I'm starting to feel pretty good. I want to, I want to do these feet though, because they look very weird. And I like, I respect that. I like and respect this. <laughs> weird looking feet. <laughs> weird looking feet. Feet are, okay. Like, what was the last time you just sat and looked at a hand or a foot? These are weird looking things. They're, they're utilitarian. They work. But man, every once in a while, I'll spend a little time just going. Ugh. I don't think I've ever looked at a thing until I thought it looked weird. But I, like, there's some words that I'll, I'll say. And I'm like, why does, why does that sound wrong? Like yeah. Jeep. The more you say the word Jeep, the more you realize that Jeep is not a word that really belongs in the human <laughs> vocabulary. And Did linoleum. They address that in season one of Ted Lasso. Like, there's a term for when you get a word stuck in your head that's just weird. Yeah, that's what I thought of too. I can't think of the some, something synesthesia or something. Yeah, yeah. synesthesia uh, is when you like process a sense with a unexpected sensory organ. Like you see color. No wait, hear color. I see color already. Semantic satiation. There you Whoa, go. there we it go. Was. It started with an S, though. Yeah. Wow, way um, to go, Diamond Dog. Yeah, <laughs> you're an honorary member now. I know one word that they use frequently, so it's obvious that that's not the word, but I've, I'm not going to use that here as a family show. Jew is? What? Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Oh, did I say that out loud? Got that guy's mic. We need to put a delay on here. Oops. All right. I don't know if this is going to work. This is such a weird shape. Let's grab a circle. Grab that. Hit my shortcut key for follow me. So Lawrence brings up a good point. Are these uh, in the UK, are these called meters instead of feet? Called what? <laughs> meters. That's okay. an excellent question. Please answer. <laughs> I'm, I don't live there, so I, I need know. to know. At first, I was like, oh, such silliness. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I don't, so I don't know this, but I am curious. English is kind of, kind of be known for using the same word for multiple meanings, right? That's a thing that we just we just do it. We just can't stop ourselves from doing that. Is that something that other languages do too? Or is that just a special, special English thing? I don't know. We got any multilingual, multiple lingual lures? Polyglots. Whoa, that yeah. was rude. Yeah, so I am. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, to cut this, this is the weird part. Um, I'm going to cut this with, uh, I'm just going to create a solid over here. That's, that's something like this, chop it and then move some points around to make it right. Um, let's see. I don't That's I don't not my favorite thing that happened today. It feels like <laughs> it feels like it's supposed to be the opposite of the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Building up. 
What's what are we building up to? Uh, one question that should be fairly easy to answer. You've used the Bezier tool or extension a few times, and is that the one built by? Because that's not a native tool, or is it one of the extensions that you just have to turn on? Uh, it, it it you do have to download it. So it is from the SketchUp team. Um, but it doesn't come pre-installed. You have to download it from Extension Warehouse. It's a free extension, though. Uh, Which I know there's other other uh, Bezier tools out there, and I've seen them, and there's some awesome ones. I guess you, I just keep my Bezier simple, so I've never really... Do you feel like one is Bezier than the others? Get out. <laughs> Joey's going home early today, folks. I'm the one sitting here next to the, the little mic box. I'm the one that actually gets to kill That's mics. True. Jody is in control. All right, so I'm gonna slide this over here. Nope, too much. So Lawrence and Andy both completely nailed it on Matt's weird, weird little trombone sound. It's not the opposite of, of a sad trombone. It's just the, the parents, the adults from Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Oh, you guys are talking about polyglots and semantic satiation. I'm just like, okay. All I'm hearing is wah, wah. Charlie Brown adults. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The fact that you've got different sounds you can do makes me wonder if you're just literally sitting there with a trombone <laughs> <laughs> trying it out. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So there's that. And now one last thing I want to do is to come in here, take this face right here. I'm going to rotate it to flat. Ah, let me out. Actually, I don't know what flat is because inside here, it's angled. So again, I'm going to hit this. I'm going to say reset, which will put it back to the world view, which means now when I come in here, oops, reset. Now I should be able to grab this face and rotate this to the red axis. which should give me a flat foot. I just want to take a moment to applaud you in your usage of axis versus axes. So I do, I do, I do things correct. That's you how really I seem to have upped your game. It's all I know. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to applaud you that uh, sometimes we'll go for quite a while without the model kind of looking like anything, but your model looked pretty great 15 minutes in, and since then you've just been uh, making it greater. Thanks. I believe the appropriate usage is more great. Um, what I, more greater. There you go. Cheese grater. I'll take <laughs> any of those and, and appreciate it. All right, I'm definitely struggling with my, uh, there we go. I'm going to midpoint there. Cool. All right, let me grab. The first thing I'm going to do is make this a component. Leg. Mm -hmm. I just want to comment that the best thing you can do is stick a, a big, heavy cast iron pot belly stove on a light bulb. I know these are the <laughs> these are just the worst looking legs. They're just I don't know if this is like somebody photoshopped and cut some stuff out of here, but they don't seem to be attached by much. Cool. 
so but if you look right here like these literally look like they almost look like they're hinged like you're gonna fold it up and then bring it with you but yeah i don't know it's not impressive so i'm gonna throw that little that little connecty connecty shape Something like that ish. Awesome. All right, now I'm going to grab this and this, and I need a reference. So I draw a line right out the middle and grab that too. I'm going to option copy that right here. I'm going to scale about the middle to negative one. Then I'm going to grab it by that line, drop that line right on top of the existing line, and I got mirrored feet. All right. Cool. Oh, okay. One last thing, because I want a chimney on this so bad. I'm going to draw this little... Uh, this little shape right here. So I'm gonna come back. I think it's about halfway up here. So I'm gonna go draw a line right there at the back. Draw a line straight back like that. Throw a circle on there. Nope, a bigger circle. All right. And then I'm going to take that, bring that back here a little bit, offset that until it hits right there. Matt, Jody, you guys have been doing this a while. Maybe you remember. Uh, October Halloween is coming up. What Halloween themed stuff have we done in the past, or has Aaron done? His uh, I've only been doing it a year, and a year ago he didn't do anything. He said what? that. <laughs> he said that uh, Fireside Chat was uh, was a Halloween themed episode That's in right. season one with John Brock. Okay. Um, I I know you did a Halloween live stream like three years ago or something where you guys all dressed up or was that two years ago? Oh, I can't remember, but, um, costumes. you guys all dressed up in costumes and like kind of switched places and stuff. Right. Yeah. That was, uh, one of Tyson's first time on a live. Transom said you can model a pumpkin. We, that we could do that again. Or a jack-o'-lantern would, that is a fun one. A good uh, it is a fun model to do. You have done a pump. Or was it a skill builder or was it a live stream? I think we did it. I think it, we ended up doing both. I think Josh modeled a pumpkin on our one of our Halloween live streams. And we did, we did a haunted house. No, wait, that was that was totally just a. a we did a haunted house last month. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you guys missed that. Missed that one. You guys, your haunted mansion. That's Ahead true. of our time. Mm -hmm. Let's just replay it. We'll just you know, like remember when, and then we'll just play old oldies but goodies. Oh, mm -hmm. there we go. Missed it, do it. We'll do a clip show. I like it. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. So I went over and I was looking up uh, pot belly po stove versus just a, your standard wood burning stove. Mm -hmm. And apparently, the more modern wood burning is all about like trying to reduce particulates and and general emissions. EPA actually has guidelines, and these pot belly don't necessarily have that, but they get really, really, really hot, like twenty thousand BTUs. That's a lot of butts. Yeah. Woo. Um. I one time was uh, rented a cabin in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan that uh, had UP. Uh, uh, yep, the UP 
Um, and they had a potbelly stove in there. And I think my son was like two at the time. So it was actually <laughs> terrible. There's just big things in the middle of the living room and you're just like constantly, no, don't go over there. Don't go over there. Get back, get back. <laughs> and now your son doesn't have fingerprints. It's amazing. Right. Super handy. <laughs> well, not only does it get hot, but it's also like this big chunk of hard metal with sharp corners and just asking to take a chunk out of a forehead. So yeah, my, uh, my daughter has a scar right above her eyebrow from, oh, it was my son from uh, catching a, a sharp corner in a, a place that was not designed for kids. I don't know. This world, man, I tell you. Everybody should have a scar on their head somewhere. It shows you're really, truly lived as a child. That's right. <laughs> Where's yours, Jody? I don't have one. I didn't have it as a child. Mm-hmm. It shows tr- true parental neglect. <laughs> yeah. No, my scar's on my hand from hanging out of my pole fort on a nail. Left a little bit of... I may, you know, we were just talking about how I think hands are weird looking. Maybe I got a thing against them because that's where I keep most of my scar tissue. Seems like a good place to put it. All mine, interestingly enough, all my scars are on my left hand. I'm like, I got to get that. Got to get my moneymaker. Got to keep it safe. That's right. Hide, hide the right. <laughs> all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is where we're going to, guys. Nice. I think this turned out pretty cool. I think this is a good place to go to. I want to go to there. I think that would work. And he wants to know if you're going to pull the, the cabin back in and stick it in there. We we'll probably do that too. Let's, uh, let's go import. Yeah, there's definitely something going. I'm definitely gotten, gotting, I'm gotting, I'm gotting a lag of some sort here for sure. Oh, hey, hey, Sumele. She oh, is a twin. Double, Did you guys double. know that? Oh, Brad points out that also potbelly can use coal, which I guess is another notable thing. Yeah, doesn't coal get like way hotter when it burns than, that's than probably, wood does? That's probably how they get to the 20,000 BTUs. Yeah. Uh, Tim does, does point out that uh, we never really got around to the, the ridges on the outside. Yeah, I was hoping nobody... I thought Andy would be the one to call that one out. <laughs> Maybe this is a smooth version. This he, is a smooth... Yeah, he probably... This is the upgraded model. Andy probably private messaged Tim because he was trying to <laughs> deflect a little bit of the uh, the aggression we got going. Well, we established that Aaron is a smooth guy as Jody and I like to chunk you. Good point. That's right. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is in character. Oh, yeah, buddy. Not bad. Cozy. Next week, we'll create a grandma's feather bed. It's eight like feet it. wide and 10 feet thick. <laughs> Soft as a downy chick. Wow. Thanks for that throwback. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get when you come on here. I'll tell you that. Uh, that's right. John Deere or John Denver. Not John Deere. John Deere. He's classic. That's my, my favorite John Deere song. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drop it. We're there. We're gonna be done. Nice. Um, That's looking good. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yes. That's awesome. Wow. We just stack them up on that one. It's, right. it's like the the end of a fireworks display, right? Where they just they sort of hit. The, the launch button. And the grand finale. Left. That's right. Mm-hmm. Matt, Matt literally just slapped his hand on his keyboard to see what all sounds came out. <laughs> I got I've seen that video. It's like, a, I can't remember where it is, but it's a, a, a fireworks show where they accidentally set them all off at once <laughs> yeah. for the entire fireworks show. And it just looks like daytime, but it's like it's complete <laughs> chaos going on. Like it's so lit up. It's like, oh my God, it's the craziest video. Everybody it's watching the... is trying to figure out when they're supposed to say ooh and ah or what they just, they're just supposed to be like yelling swear words and running away. Takes your breath away. If this is the beginning, think about what the finale is going to be like. <laughs> is this how they're starting? <laughs> awesome. Well, so we got we got a couple things to tell you guys about real quick before we sign off completely. Next week, we'll be back here on Friday live stream. Uh, Tyson's going to take the model he created three weeks ago 
Because remember, he modeled a toy version of a biplane. Super awesome model. Going to take that and uh, show you guys how to create some shop drawings of it. So say you have a 3D model of a thing you've modeled. How do you take that model and get it to something you can go build in the shop? And that's what he's going to show. So it's going to be an awesome layout session. You guys got to check that out. Um, I'm, I'm excited to learn because I have some models that I've never built. So the only thing that's stopping me is this class, I think. That's, that's it. Also, I want to be able to make a wooden biplane. There we go. Joey's going to make a wooden biplane after this. Um, the other thing is we have some fresh, new, brand new, fresh. thought I had more words than that, but apparently it's fresh and new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, podcast coming out starting next Thursday. Next Thursday at noon, we'll be kicking off a new podcast called Donuts and Design. The idea here is... Uh, designers, and designers are all of you, anybody who makes or designs anything, uh, we want to do kind of a uh, an informal but educational podcast where we can get together and we can talk about things that are design related, architecture, uh, industrial design, product design, graphic design, design is a whole concept. So we're going to hang out next Thursday at noon on our Crowdcast page. Uh, it will be recorded as a podcast and released as one later on, but you can actually join us for the live recording next Thursday noon and actually be part of uh, how we put this thing together. It's going to be fun. Will there be a live studio audience? That's right. And a laugh track? No, sir. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I expose too much of myself on the show sometimes. Just open myself up <laughs> to crunchy here. peanut butter and canned laughter. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So that's our plan next week. Swing by Crowdcast on Thursday, crowdcast.io slash SketchUp, and you can watch us record our podcast. And we're going to be looking for input, so it's not just a passive thing. You can actually hang out with us, uh, tell us what we're doing wrong and that kind of thing. And then back here on Friday, right here in this room, we're going to be recording, or, or, or I'm sorry, streaming layout learning with Tyson. So it's going to be a good time. Um, but I think that's it. That's all we got now. So, so oh, there's a I, lot of people sharing ideas of what should go in this cabin. So you should probably be good to remind everyone that you can go and download this model and put whatever you want in the cabin. That's right. Yep. Yeah. We will put the link uh, in YouTube, in the YouTube description uh, after the stream is up to download the model. Sweet. So it will, it will have a pot belly stove in it. That's something. Awesome. Well, we'll call it at this point. Uh, hope you guys had fun. Hope you uh, learned something. Until next time we see you, stay safe, stay sane, and uh, see you later. See you next time. Thanks. Thanks.